By taking control of the words that you use, you take control of who you will be. By taking control of the words that you use, you take control of who you will be. Remember the story of the princess and the pea? Well, we've gathered here tonight to place a little green pea beneath of the mattresses of the unconscious sleepers. Watch the world laying down lie upon lie. Watch the world telling you who you should be. Loved ones, enemies, media feeds. Watch yourself lie awake all night. Watch yourself, watch yourself in the morning face the black and blue truth. What is this pee that keeps me from my sleep? That P is who you're truly meant to be, the poets say. The social media circus lights shine into our eyes as we lie on our couches and we gaze at our screens and we graze and graze and graze. Remote news from remote satellites clutching our remote controls. Well, we control the channels, but who's controlling us? Allen Ginsberg cannot save us now, no matter how he howls. Langston Hughes has dried up like a raisin in the sun, and there is no more Adrian Rich to dive into the wreck of what we have become. But they have left you behind a baton of wisdom, poets. So grasp it now with your own wise words and help this world see under what distracting mattresses will you find your pee? You can clap now. <laughs> Thank you. By taking control of the words that you use, you take control of who you will be. Remember the story of the princess and the pea. On a dark and rainy night, a mysterious girl knocks upon the castle door seeking shelter from the storm. When asked who she is, the girl, true to her word, says, Princess. Now, the queen was rightly suspicious, and she devises a test to place a little green garden pea beneath the mysterious girl's mattress. And upon that mattress, the queen places 20 more. The idea being that if that girl is truly who she says she is, she will easily be able to feel that little green pea even through all of those distracting layers. And in the morning, true to her word, the mysterious girl rappels down from her bed, black and blue and cranky from a bad night's sleep. Now that little green pea was the truth of who the girl was, a princess. And every mattress was another obstacle attempting to distance the girl from her truth. So now, I invite you to imagine your own little green pea, shining bright like an emerald of light. And now, imagine written upon it a word, a word that declares who you are or maybe whom you aspire to be. And no matter what obstacles are placed in your way, never lose your connection to the promise of that word and the truth of who and what you are. Because by taking control of the words that you use, you take control of who you will be. My father's name is Dale, spelled D-A-L-E, and my mom and my dad had four children. The first was named David, the second was named Laurie, and then along came Eric. And then on the spring of 1962, my father, a very intelligent man, realized that if he just had one more kid, and he named that kid an A name, <laughs> then he could spell his entire name with the first letters of all of his children's names. 
and that's why my parents had me, because they needed an A. <laughs> I am not making this up. I was literally born to be, I was born a poet in order to complete the letters of an acrostic poem. <laughs> And so it's important to remember the name that you were given was someone else's choice, right? But from here on out, the words you choose to define yourself are completely up to you. So fast forward 13 years, I am now in seventh grade in Blacksburg, Virginia, in my bedroom, lying on my bed, flipping a penny. Heads, tails, tails, heads, and it takes a wild hop and it goes off the bed. It goes down the crack between the bed and the wall and it slides down the wall and it goes behind the baseboard and it disappears. And I was such a worried and anxious kid back then. I could not, I could not stand the idea of that penny being behind the baseboard and nobody knowing about it. And it's not that I felt sorry for the penny, but I did feel the responsibility for letting the entire world know where the penny was. <laughs> so that responsibility weighed heavy on me, and instinctually I took my pencil, and on the wall I wrote, Penny lost down here on the night of <laughs> April 12th. <laughs> 1976, at, at 5 till 9 p.m. in 5 seconds by Alan Dean Wolf. <laughs> and whoosh, just like that, the weight was gone. I felt light as a feather. I felt like a million bucks, all because I had written it down. And from that day forward, I began to write on my walls every day for years all the way through middle school, all the way through high school. I wrote on all four walls. I wrote on the floor. I wrote on the ceiling. This is the ceiling here. I wrote on the furniture. I wrote on the window panes. And usually it was just nonsense that I wrote. For example, we eat the organs of cute little bunnies. <laughs> But sometimes I would write about what I did, or where I had been, or what I was afraid of. And I would say that this fear that you see here, now today, to me, looks a lot like Barney the Purple Dinosaur, <laughs> right? One day, and you know, so I was literally writing myself into existence. I was sort of like that penny, writing its way into the room from the baseboard. And uh, one day I outlined my hand, my left hand, and then I outlined my right hand, and it looked like just a kid putting his hands on the wall. But then, almost by accident, I randomly made a face behind the hands, and suddenly it looked like there was somebody on the other side of the wall looking in. And so I wrote, help, I'm trapped on the other side of this wall. <laughs> Inside out and backward. <laughs> And at the time, I thought, well, that just looks cool. But now I look back and I realize that I really was like that kid, riding his way into the room, arriving, declaring who I was. And years later, I would write this novel. It's called Zane's Trace, about a kid who writes on his bedroom walls. And I left those walls behind and I started to keep a proper journal and I became a collector of words. In fact, every time I looked up something in the dictionary, we didn't have internet back then, I looked something up in the dictionary, I would leave a little tiny tick mark in the margins. Sometimes words I had to look up multiple times. And now because of the computer, I can keep a running list of words that are important to me. And I call this file, uh, my favorite words, a lexicon for living. Because over the years, I have cultivated a working vocabulary. Not so that I can sound like I'm smart, but so that I can sound like myself. So that I can have a working vocabulary that works for me. 
Here's an example. Everyday use words. Repeat after me. Gregarious. Gregarious. Taciturn. Taciturn. Loquacious. Loquacious. How about professional words? Bibliophile. Bibliophile. Galley. Galley. Gutter. Gutter. I can also write, say it better words. For example, instead of saying very hungry, I would say ravenous. Instead of very showy, flamboyant. Instead of very good, splendiferous. I love that word. <laughs> Some other great words, fun pocket words that you should just know. Arenaceous. Like a hedgehog. Canoodle. If you're kissing. Uh, shambolic. shambolic. Like my brain is right now. <laughs> Right? And something else that I found is very powerful about words, hard to remember words, that once I learned after the barn door was closed, I have to go back and I have to memorize them a little bit more. Replica? Replica. Resistance? Resistance. Standardize? Standardize? And one word that I've been having to look up for the last six years over and over again, Demagogue. Demagogue. You got it. Now check this out. You're going to hear a lot about anxiety for the rest of this night, I think. And you've been hearing a lot about it uh, you know, since the pandemic hit us. But I use transformative words. Words that can reframe the feelings that I already have. Instead of worrying about what's going to happen tonight, I'm going to wonder what I'm going to learn. I'm still feeling the same feelings, but I'm just calling them something different. I turn worry into wonder. I turn anxiety into anticipation. I turn concern into caring. Same feelings, different words. I can also use transformative words to redirect my feelings into actions. So if I am feeling fear, I can turn it into the word determination and I can actually do something different. If I am paralyzed by love, as some of us are, I can turn that into appreciation. And so now I invite you to try it yourself. Begin your own love affair with language. Become a collector of words and start your own living lexicon. But always remember the lesson of my father's name, the lesson of my bedroom walls, and always remember the lesson of the princess and the pea. By taking control of the words that you use, you take control of who you will be. Now be well, do good, and metaphors be with you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>